All right. <laughs> Welcome back to the shop. Tonight we're going to shoot episode four of Mara's Betsy Ross Jeep project. Um, tonight we are going to work on trying to pull this engine out of Betsy Ross. So the one that had the bad compression, we're going to try and pull that out. And Mara, you're going to have to get your hands dirty. So Mara has her friend Rachel over and um, she's going to help while we try to pull this engine out and get it on the ground so that we can get ready to pull the other one and put it back in. So here we go. We're going to pick up this, this closer. So now we can see, see we have the lights and yeah. the toolbox is right there and we have room for a workbench. We can move this table around here and then we can, we can get at this engine. Yeah, I get it. Okay. And then I just. Well, sometimes you gotta try it, see if it's gonna work. Which way is it gonna go? Should I try it? Okay. So I pull the trigger? Okay, see, we have to actually get Crank it the entire time. <laughs> we only have about two hours tonight to get the lot done. So. I got his sack. Gotta use as many tools as we can to get out of the way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah. Once we get this guy out, we'll be done with those. Uh, we're gonna take this off and then we. Yeah, but we're done with this size. I think so for now. Yeah. Oh, we got one more over here, somewhere. All the way, all the way in the back there, right there. Right there in the back. Can't really see it, it's just kind of, you know, I know it's there. So reach your hand down in here and feel where that, where, see where my finger is right there? You feel that guy? Yeah. You have to get a wrench on that. I accidentally <laughs> that one might that one might need the mechanical the regular ratchet mm. um, just because of the uh, angle. angle of it um, sometimes if you take the socket off and then you you can get that down in there on it then you can reach the head in here you want to try this and then um, reach the socket in and then put that on there then you can say, oh, well, do I need the extension? Maybe not, but try putting this onto where that, that is without the extension. And if that doesn't work, then we gotta go get a different extension. And because of the way this is, you might wanna try a universal. So you can come over here and you can see this. This is what's called a universal. Mm -hmm. So it flexes a little bit, so you can put this Maybe you put this universal on this wrench so socket and then slide the socket down onto that piece. And then once that's there, now put this in that universal. All right. and now put the wrench in the, in this one. Yep. And you're gonna to want to do it slow by hand first. No, don't go straight to the to the to the button. So, so go. You're gonna to have to hold both sides of the wrench, and then just turn it a little bit and a little bit, and then once it gets a little bit tight, you gotta keep this kind of straight up as much as you can. And then once you think, okay, we're starting to get it. Now go ahead and pull that trigger. Let's go. There you go, and now you have a bolt. All right, and this guy. Oh, it's the engine, because there's yeah, little sense. bits of oil that come up through these lifters, yeah, I know. and they squirt through here, and they lubricate all these springs and these these flex things. I know that. Um, so that. I think I see that one. That one's not at top dead center. That one is at or close to it. That's on the compression stroke, probably. But um, so the lubric it lubricates this whole top engine. And without a valve cover gasket, it will leak oil all down the side, which is what this has. This has that oil all down the side. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So what we <laughs> what we need to do is we need to be able to bolt. The, the leveling thing or the, the engine picker to one of these here and then one of these back here and then uh, oh, okay. engine crane, engine hoist. It's probably not that? called the cherry picker. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where I call it. That. Did you get it from Grandpa? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> So this whole spot here is the engine. This is the oil pan. Yes, I was right. Um, the the transmission take. This is the crank of the engine, mm -hmm. um, and that's where the pistons. That's where you get your power from. Okay, yeah, so no the pistons are in here, and every time a piston comes up, 
It compresses the air. Remember we talked about compression the other day? Yep. It compresses the air. The spark plug fires the fuel and the fuel goes boom and it pushes down on the, on the crankshaft, which is down here, and that spins. The power from that explosion, or from that combustion, goes along the crankshaft and connects to the output shaft of the motor. And the output shaft of the motor in an automatic transmission is back here, it's connected to a flex plate. And the flex plate connects to a torque converter. And the torque converter connects to the transmission. So the torque converter makes it so that when you stop, it doesn't stall the engine. You know how when you drive my Jeep, you stop and you don't put it in the clutch, it just, bleh, it dies? Yeah. So the torque converter acts like the clutch, but it's kind of automatic. So it just doesn't, it just releases and lets the engine spin while the, while the, the tires in the back are not. Mm -hmm. And then from the torque converter, it goes into the transmission and in an automatic, it has these bands that wrap around each gear. Mm -hmm. And when it shifts gear, it releases pressure on one band and pulls pressure on another band to change the gears from one to the other, from like one to two to three to four. And the pressure is, comes from an automatic transmission fluid. And that fluid is what controls those bands that, that open and close on, on the, the gears. Mm -hmm. in the transmission and so that torque converter um, spins a fluid pump in mm -hmm. the transmission and the fluid pump pumps the fluid through the valve body and the valve body is what controls which gear you're in so that's how the automatic transmission works and it's and it's directly in line with the engine so this crank goes out the back in this in this jeep not all jeeps not all cars but in the back, it comes out, it goes all the way through the transmission, and then in, because we're four-wheel drive, it goes into the transfer case. And the transfer case is what gives you power to the front wheels and the back wheels. So we're going to change definitely the transmission, probably the transfer case. We're prob probably going to change them all to that other Jeep. <clears throat> also, what are we going to do with this? Like, where are we going to put it after we take it out? When we get this out, we're going to put it on an engine stand, oh. and then we'll probably pull the head off of it and see what the cylinders look like. Ooh, yeah. And then, um, that might not be tonight, <laughs> oh, um, but, um, back, but, but we'll, we'll pull it off and we'll see how good it is because it's still probably a pretty good engine. And if we pull it off and we pull it apart and it's really, really good inside, it might be a good one to build for a like a stroker motor or a racing motor or something like that. Racing motor. So that might be Thanks something that, that we want to do because this is similar to the one that's in my Jeep and it's similar to the one that's going to be in your Jeep. And if we build it, if we repair the problems that it has, you know, um, bore it and stroke it and okay. give it a little bit more power, it'll, then, be, it'll be ready to go into the next Jeep that we want to build. Which so. will be my second Jeep, not yours. Your second Jeep? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just sad. Wait, um, you could actually make a racing Jeep. Yeah, they actually um, they turbocharge these motors, and they can they can go really fast. Um, but that's not what we're here to do. Um, the next thing we gotta do is we gotta pull the flex plate bolts out. So mm -hmm. we'll have to turn the engine over a little bit, um, and then we'll take the bolts out for the flex plate that connect to the flex plate to the motor. And then once that's off, we'll disconnect the bell housing bolts and mm -hmm. then we'll take this out. Cause we're gonna take the engine out separate from the transmission because it's easier. Yeah. But it's dinner time. So go get washed up. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Your Jeep, is it a 98? Mine is a 99. 99. Another question. What is a CV transmission? A CV transmission a is a constant velocity transmission. Like what? What makes it different from... Now, once we have once we have that selected, um, look right down there. Watch yourself. Let's see if we can see the light on there. Oh, maybe that didn't help at all. All right. 
Um, look right down there. You see the where the light's shining? You yeah. see the little gear looking thing? And watch what happens when I move this. That is the flex plate. When I move this, see it move? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so there are, go. watch right there. You're going to see as this comes around, there's going to be a bolt or a nut or the, the head of a bolt there. See it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And now we have to take that bolt out. And then we have to rotate it again and take the next one out. And then we rotate it again and take the next one out until we've taken them all out. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that bolt size, <clears throat> uh, that looks like it's about a 15 mil. Uh, Turn it a little bit. Oh, oh, stop right there. Uh, all right, uh, hand me the um, the small ratchet. Small ratchet, the motorized one. Oh, the non-motorized one, yeah. Is it called 3H because of uh, 3 eighths, I mean, because of its size? It's 3 eighths of an inch, yep. The size of that little square yeah. mm -hmm. is 3 eighths of an inch. Gotcha. All right, so that, oh man, that is, okay. oh. Where the spark plugs were, we put a um, compression like, thingy. Compression like thingy. <laughs> Yeah, the little thing that goes up and down, it has a certain amount of pressure. Uh, and we started it by connecting some... Alright, now, now what you need to do, Yeah. is you need to stop that thing from rotating when okay. I'm trying to run these bolts. Oh, so stop it from moving? Yep. Okay, that one is loose. today when I asked my dad about the YouTube channel I told him about like what you guys were planning to do today and he he almost got like jealous he's like man that sounds like fun well you can invite him over next time <laughs> uh, all right turn it a little bit what you need some extra help on this yeah you know I got beer in the fridge <laughs> <laughs> just tell Keep me going. okay yeah he loves working on any vehicle he works on fire trucks. All right, there you go. He works on cars for a living? Uh, well, he didn't. He was a firefighter, but he recently got a job working on fire trucks. Oh. Um, and he All works. Right. Now you need to stop it from Yeah. All right, turn in a quarter it. mile. Alcohol cars go about 250 something, I think, keep around going, there going, in the going. quarter mile. All right, so stop they're right like there. a step down. All right, now stop it from turning. Okay. Uh, okay. Wow. Keep yeah. turning it. Uh, uh, just uh, right way. Switch directions. They're in Las Vegas at this the This way. All right. Keep mm. going. I think we got them all. Okay, now I've got the trans jack supporting the transmission. We have the flex plate bolts out. I have the bell housing bolts out. So this engine should come right out of there. And those are the famous last words because it never works that way. No. <laughs> See, so, let's grab this guy. There are certain things that you learn. Never works the way you think. I hear that there are two things that you learn from being a mechanic. One is patience, and two is every curse word imaginable. <laughs> My dad said he missed out on the patience part. <laughs> what, you got patience? No, he missed out on that part. He only learned the curse word part. <laughs> <laughs> you don't learn patience as a mechanic. I mean, that's... Come 
over here and get a hand on this. So what we're going to want to do, it's hanging now. She oh, you smart, Alex. <laughs> what, you can be smart, but she can't? <clears throat> yes. That's, oh, wow. It's always teasing day, except for today. Um, all right. Give it a, go ahead, and, go ahead and give it a couple of pumps. Jack it up. This? Yep. See how it like, I, see, I, I wish I could have gotten one of these other chains over. Keep going. Keep going. Go a long way to go. We're free of the transmission, so that's good. Alright, we're going to keep going. Is getting too heavy it? hard? No, I'm just trying to be slow. Alright, you can go I'm faster now. feet on the back so that when you're pulling it doesn't tip too much and just try to pull backwards just slowly um, a little bit just gentle because you don't want to pull it too much what do we cut on the okay so try to come this way a little bit tell you what why don't you come over here and 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 just kind of keep it away from the side a little bit and I'm going to pull. Watch your toes a little bit there. Okay. This thing has a huge layer of oil on it. It does have a <laughs> That's huge what layer. happens to engines. Yeah. Every well, time. Especially, especially one with a lot of miles on it that blows out all its seals. Yep. Alright, watch your toes. time. I was going to take you back at 9. I'm 8. Um, but uh, we're, we, this happened faster than I thought. So why don't we go to the basement, get the engine stand. We can put this on the engine stand and pull the head off it. Is that cool? Or you need to get back and get home you get to sleep? Sleep's not a problem. Yeah, whether Maggie needs to go out or not. I think Maggie's alright. No, no, we're not homework. homework. Okay. Yay. Maggie the dog. Maggie the dog. Oh yeah, you gotta dog take the dog sitting. out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we okay. should have just brought her here and um, then she could play with me. stand um, just out of curiosity now we want to pull the head off of it we want to see what the cylinders look like it's not going to do us any good for anything other than just kind of knowing what we were had and also we can show Mara what the inside of an engine looks like so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the um, head bolts out and pull the engine up, pull the head off the engine here we go <laughs> Thank you. 
for now is we're looking for scoring on the cylinder walls. I don't see very much. Oh, there's a little bit there. Yes. Scoring. Um, scoring are vertical up and down marks. Oh. Is that, that, she... that, mm -hmm. yeah, that one has some oil there. I don't see, I don't see very much scoring. That was one of the ones that was down on pressure. Look at the, they had a scoring on the side of the cylinder there. See that? Yeah. <clears throat> is it here? But this is one of the ones that was low. Oh, there's some, there's some down there. It's not terrible though. Huh? All right. Just awkward silence. So, on the front of the head, over here, yeah. is where the thermostat goes. Mm -hmm. And the thermostat is what opens and closes to allow the coolant to run through the engine. Yeah. And all of the area in, the, in behind there is where the coolant runs. All the way back to here, that's another cap that covers the coolant passage. Mm -hmm. So this is all filled up with water inside there and and so that's how it keeps from overheating mm -hmm. now that coolant runs through these passages look here see this right here yeah and right here mm -hmm. do you see how that's plugged up yeah. do you see how that's got rust flakes in it mm -hmm. those it not supposed to have that? no those those coolant passages are are restricted and plugged see that one right there is plugged solid oh my so that can cause major problems in an engine when that buildup gets in there and there is um, and there is a blockage in your coolant pa passage oh that is just filled with garbage in there and that's all through in, in through here so, so very it's a very good reason it's a very good that we chose not to just blindly run this engine now we might have been okay if we ran a you know, a cleaner through there, but I'm just having a much better feeling about pulling the engines out and at least, at very least, rebuilding them. So, all right. Hey, where's your connecting rods still work? <laughs> <laughs> connecting rods are still in the engine, yes. <laughs> well, thanks everybody for stopping out tonight. We had a good time. We pulled the engine out, we got it on the stand, we looked at it, we learned a little bit about internal combustion engines tonight. Yeah? yeah? I hope you guys did too. Hope you had a good time stopping out. Next time we're going to start working on the other engine and try to get that out of the donor Jeep. We are going to go ahead and completely remove the transmission and transfer case too because we're going to want to clean this and paint it now that we have it open. We're going to do a little bit more work in there. I'm not sure what the next video is going to be, whether we're going to show you pulling the transmission and transfer case, or if I'm going to do that while she's off at work. Or if, um, you know, it could just be uh, me working and not her. Punk. <laughs> but that's it for tonight. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, and uh, one of these links here somewhere is going to be for the playlist. This is number four. There are three others where we did the compression test and everything like that. If you have any questions about the process or if you want to see any parts of it, 
put that in the comments so we know we can make a video on that before we get past it. And then you're like, well, we wanted to see how you disconnected the transfer case. Well, we got to know. I know. I know. It's terrible. We're doing this pretty real time. I'm making this on a Tuesday and I'm going to try to get it up so that you guys can watch it on Sunday. So if you see this and it's still October of 2022, go ahead and comment. Again, come on back for more. Hopefully we're going to try to do at least one video every week. I want to get this hunk of junk out of my shop so that I can work on my projects and not hers. And she wants to get it done so that she can drive in February. We'll see which one happens first. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Thanks for stopping out. We'll see you guys next time. Don't want to be seen by the camera. Bum, 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 bum. It's on wide angle.